St. John's, Newfoundland, a place of history and natural beauty, where culture and traditions of the past carry over into modern life. For centuries, daily survival in Newfoundland depended on interactions with the natural world, and animals in particular played a crucial role. Well, you could say that they've, you know, uh, always been important uh, since the the settling of Newfoundland, uh, <clears throat> aside from, you know, indigenous peoples that were here before, uh, was based on the fishery, you know, so that's what brought people here first. Uh, also, you know, the seal hunt um, for food and then moose and rabbit and, you know, a variety of wild birds. This is fresh fish and this is smoked, hot smoked um, trout, fish cakes, these are fish puddings, smoked salmon puddings, right? That's salt fish. But some Newfoundlanders are challenging this traditional lifestyle. I don't believe that tradition trumps the life of animals, you know, I, I don't believe that just because we used to do it years and years ago that we should be doing it to animals nowadays. It is 2017, we do live in St. John's, Newfoundland, mm -hmm. we can go to a grocery store or a clothing store uh, to purchase these products to survive, you know, we don't need it anymore. Back in the 1940s, um, a gentleman whose last name was Watson coined a definition. He coined the term vegan, and he coined the definition for the word. And the definition is something like um, a practice which seeks to ex exclude as much as is feasible um, the exploitation of har or harm of animals. So it's a philosophy and a practice. And the practice of veganism can manifest in a bunch of different ways. I mean, to be vegan, uh, you don't consume any animal products. That's meat, dairy, uh, eggs. Um, you don't use animal products in your day-to-day -day life, like yeah. leather, wool, fur, no animal products in your um, like household cleaners or um, body products, things like that. It's an all-encompassing lifestyle. It's not just a diet. It can be done for ethical reasons, for health reasons, or for environmental reasons. And it's, it's basically just a way of trying to create the least amount of pain and suffering in the world that you can. And it's, it's one venue to do that. My name's Jackson McLean. I'm assistant manager at the seed company by E.W. Gaze. It's a downtown uh, seed flower shop. I'm from St. John's, Newfoundland. I grew up here. The vegan community here in St. John's is, it seems pretty special. I mean, I, I don't have that much experience with the other vegan communities, but for us, it's a very supportive group of people. St. John's has definitely become more vegan friendly as a city in the last seven years since I first went vegan with my wife. Restaurants, for example, back then there was only maybe one or two places where you could get a vegan option easily. Um, but now there's dozens of restaurants locally where you can just walk in and say I'm vegan and they'll say, oh, here's our vegan menu. The first vegetarian restaurant, as far as I know, in St. John's opened in 2005 and that was The Sprout. And people were so excited about this and it was packed constantly. So, you know, I've seen a lot of change in what people eat and the kinds of foods that are considered desirable uh, has, has changed a lot just in the 20 years that, that I've been here. We eat the Peaceful Loft about once a week. We like the sprout. I should not say, but I'm going to confess that we like sugar mamas. <laughs> um, because they have a really great vegan selection. Again, like you, would, you wouldn't think in St. John's there'd be so many options, but there really are. When you're out with a group of vegans, you don't have to worry about like someone sitting next to you eating a steak or some other animal product because it makes me personally, it makes me feel really uncomfortable. So it's nice to be able to just go somewhere and know there's not gonna be any animal products there. You can just relax. When you think about like the animal that would be on your plate, it's easy to just choose something else. Happy Barn Farm Sanctuary is registered as a micro sanctuary. Um, so we are very tiny and because we are uh, on a residence property, um, we can only have a certain amount of animals. But 
we want people to see, uh, you know, that these animals have individual personalities and we want people to connect with them in a way that they would connect with their dogs or their cats. They all have their own, like, unique personalities, like, just like people. So I think when people can connect with that and Mm -hmm. not just see it as, like, something on their plate, it really changes their mind. I'm with uh, St. John's Farm Animal Safe. Uh, basically what we do, uh, we bear witness to animals uh, going into slaughter. We hold vigils outside of Country Ribbon. Uh, which, which is a chicken slaughter. Which is a, a chicken slaughterhouse. Um, they slaughter uh, 50,000 chickens every single day and they're in operation from Monday to Friday. So what we do is we'll ask the truck drivers uh, to stop for two minutes and that way we can obtain footage of the chickens before they're about to be slaughtered. Um, and through that footage, you know, we, we can videotape them and take pictures and show people you know what the animals are going through like it might sound crazy like oh you're just standing outside a truck taking pictures of chickens but like when you see it you understand like they're in such bad shape people just need to see it like it's not like the not like the chickens out in the barn here like not not like that at all it's horrible horrible conditions i am an organizer for anonymous for the voiceless st john's chapter Um, So what uh, Anonymous for the Voiceless is, as a global organization, um, we're an animal rights organization uh, and we specialize in um, street activism. Basically what we do is a demonstration called the Cube of Truth, um, where we have people holding screens and we uh, we show slaughterhouse footage. Um, and then people have the option to watch that or not. And if they decide to watch it, um, we have outreachers who are uh, willing to engage in conversation with them and tell them about veganism um, and try and uh, bring them to our, our lifestyle, more compassionate lifestyle. We have like received backlash when it comes to that. Um, Mainly um, from the seal hunt. The seal hunt, say, yeah. yeah. The only tricky subject here for people is the seal hunt because it's such a... Um, controversial topic and it's an industry that's been most people would say unfairly targeted by animal rights groups because um, it's it can't be hidden behind a slaughterhouse wall. I'm an administrator of our local NL Vegans group. It's funny it's actually a heated debate inside our group. Some of them support the hunt, some of them um, say okay it's alright if um, the Aboriginal communities who need the meat to survive hunt, but we don't support the commercial, the commercialization of the hunt. And then there's some people who say, no, the hunt is exploitation of animals. So there's a variety of opinions in the group about the seal hunt, and it's always fun to see the debates <laughs> that we have. Being vegan in Newfoundland is not exactly what you might expect. There's more to the lifestyle than just plant-based eating. I wish people understood how urgent it is to speak out for animals. There's so many studies that animals are sentient and Mm -hmm. it's even proven that they're even probably more emotionally um, capable of even humans, you know, so if they feel even more than humans, like what's happening to them is just, is an atrocity. If you look at an avocado and an egg, if an egg was grown by a, a backyard hen, that was treated really well, treated like a pet almost. And you take an avocado on the other hand that was grown by, let's say, slaves in Mexico, owned by the drug cartel, and gets shipped all the way across the world to get to us. Who's to say that the avocado is better than the egg, even though it's vegan? It's it's a whole spectrum of ethics when it comes to food. And I think a lot of people assume vegans are just one set, but we, we acknowledge that it's not that simple. Many of us, when, when we become vegan, we become vegan because we have um, willfully and purposefully exposed ourselves to um, film of animal suffering. And so when we become vegan, we have that footage in our heads and we know it's happening every day, that billions of animals are experiencing this every day. And there's this enormous grief that lives under the surface of so many vegans, so much grief over the suffering not only of animals, but of people who are going hungry and of the planet itself. And I went through this period of, would you just listen? And it, you become angry and you become short-tempered. And then you have people say, well, where do you get your protein? Where do you get your calcium? You people are all alike. And so for us, 
there's a combination of grief and and negativity and we become the angry vegan so i want to sort of leave you with that alternate impression of the angry vegan i've never found someone who was angry who wasn't grieving St. John's, a city where the past and future go hand in hand, where history is remembered and cherished, and new traditions are beginning to take hold.